Hello, guys. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Oh, let me turn that All right. The weather hat today is supporting the big wins this week. Really? <laughs> they don't even live in our state. I mean, they live in our state. Oh, it don't matter. <laughs> You're a lifer? I got tattoos. Says I can't change. <laughs> yeah, you can't change. You... <laughs> Keep supporting. Keep supporting. Yeah, keep, 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 no, I've been supporting homework. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, Angel's back this week. So, John, <laughs> there's a headset. <laughs> Did you guys get swag? I got swag. Oh, awesome, guys! Not yet. Get Mine's just coming. I got. I got swag. It was fun. It, okay. Somebody. It freaked me out though because somebody like <laughs> rang the doorbell and then ran, and I'm like afraid to open it. I'm like, is this gonna be a flaming pile of poo? Right. Doorbell so bitching in 2020. They leave you swag. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, my son found it and he basically acted like customs and confiscated all the candy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Thank you for telling me. Thank you for telling me. I will make sure that my son doesn't open it first. Sorry about the spoilers, Cora. Oh, no, that's fine. No, I need to know because he, he's, he's going to be for this Saturday and he's a thief. He's oh. already practiced and anything candy. Oh, you know you ain't going to get that. <laughs> right? He'd be like, oh, you want to share as I get the last little bite? No. Nah. Yep. Right. Ah. Uh. Right. Oh my God, I'm so far behind. Can I just work during this class? We're like, gonna have, I have to, to get caught up. It's all self-paced. Um, yeah, you don't. You, it's fine. You can do, work during the class. That's absolutely fine. I mean, I'll I'll hang out with you guys, and I'll also. Hey, just just remember, go ahead. Go ahead. Just remember, the videos are all online. Do you guys have the link to Nat, the Napa Learns uh, YouTube mm -hmm. channel? Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm gonna sure get that out to you guys. Um, all our videos are recorded. You guys are all superstars now. Um, people want your autographs when they see you in town, so you're welcome. Um, but any class you miss, there's always good discussions. Everyone always joins in, so please check them out. Lori, hey Juliana, hey Lori. Hi. Hey Give everybody a little bit of time to come in here. These go, oh, that's right, authenticator. It's my authenticator. Uh. Verify. Quite a lot of labs in uh, chapter three. Fun stuff, guys. You guys have fun doing those? Can anyone do the labs in chapter three? I already fessed up. No, Travis. I did not do the labs. I am so far, like, I haven't even started chapter three this week. I'm so far behind. Fun. But it's, it's like work and everything just killed me. I'm, I haven't, I've been off of Zoom today for a half an hour. Ouch. 
Okay. Well, said, this is all self-paid. He said, and we, we have a whole other course to go to after this. So when you have time, and even when our course is done, you still have these access to all these um, online chapters even after we're done with this. I know. So this no, no. I'll, I'll be caught up along with everybody else. Like, I'm not, you're not leaving me behind. I'm just saying, right now, I'm what? That's okay. We're <laughs> good. Let's more people come in here. We had a new student this week. I haven't seen him pop in yet. So I'll give him a second. Also, I'm going to have um, a guest speaker probably come in. I haven't decided probably the first week of October. I was wondering if you guys just can. This person is, um, his name is Mike, I believe. I talked to him already. He helped me get my course started. Um, he actually teaches cybersecurity for Santa Rosa, uh, for the Santa Rosa College. Um, he's very, very well versed. He actually used to do this as a job. So if you guys have any questions you want to ask someone who's actively doing this job, please write them down on the side notes and we have them come on. We can actually have no dead air and give them some real good questions about the industry and what you're looking forward to if you want to get in the industry or what someone like him might have came across specifically. Uh, so please get those questions ready for him, okay? And I'll make sure the Monday before I give you guys a heads up that he'll be here. So he's a super, super, super smart guy. All right. Here's just another minute. We have Monster University playing pretty loud in the background. Can you guys hear that? <laughs> okay. Yeah, hold on a second. Okay, so let's kind of start off where we, we kind of left off last week. Let me, I'm going to share my screen real quick um, if I can figure out how to do this. Oh. Sometimes working with dual monitors is a, a blessing and it's just a pain. I think you got a question in the chat there. Uh oh, hold on one second. Is yeah, my screen's resizing right now. I had on my, my 24 inch screen. Now I'm trying to go to my little Surface Pro screen. Everything's readjusting. Let me see here. Uh, Chad, I love the test. Is it open book? Um, when you take your actual quiz, it is not open book. I mean, it's online. So, I mean, if you had everything printed out next to you, then yeah, I guess it would, <laughs> it would be open book, but it doesn't allow you in the same browser to go flop around. Um, and that's when that's when we take the test here. Uh, when you take it, it's like when on the Cisco site, it might be different. Like it might actually be like a, a closed session where you can't go wander off. Um, I've not taken the test myself. I've just completed the courses. But I can let you know after I do the test. <laughs> All right, guys. So let me share my screen. Let me share this one. So we were just talking, can you guys see my screen right now? The course, inde uh, the course index for chapter three? How about now? So last week we were talking about the dark web and what the difference was um, and what actually it was. So I just seen the news today, this morning, there was a huge bust over the dark web. Basically uh, the dark web is basically a, like their tour sites. It's not like it's not like the internet. There are places you specifically have to go to online, specific addresses you go to. And we, as we talked about last week, when you go to these sites, you can buy, you know, tigers and lions. You can buy drugs. You can buy stolen vehicles. It's basically the dark alley with the guy with the trench coat that has like the watches in it. That's what the dark web is. Um, and this was a multinational bus between three countries. I think it was Europe, uh, Netherlands, and America. And they seized a ton of money, a ton of online crypto money, like Bitcoin. Um, they seized drugs. Uh, they busted vendors. Um, they found, Jesus, 
MDMA, ecstasy, cocaine, just huge amounts of everything. And basically, I guess this network of places over these four, these three continents led them to people's homes. And so not based on the IP addresses that were going to the one server where it was housed, they were able to find every dealer that was involved in this. And so this is just one bus. Like this isn't even probably the biggest bus, but this is a pretty big one to send a good message that, hey, you know, our countries aren't gonna stand up for this. And basically they went in uh, and they found a lot of interesting things. It's pretty good. It's a pretty cool, um, it was a pretty cool sting. If you read this, uh, this, this um, site, I'm gonna send it in the chat for everybody. I wanted to take a look at it when you can, because it is pretty cool. And we had just got done talking about it. Now, were there any questions from chapter three that anybody had? Hey, Sue. All right. All right, so let's see what so that was pretty sweet. Um, I didn't see a whole lot of terminology going on in um, in chapter three. There were some words I seen. Um, I IoT. Anyone know what IoT stands for? Internet of Things. Can you explain what would have IoT or what would use IoT? These days, your dishwasher, <laughs> your microwave, your floors, your lights, your TV, your smart speaker, and a whole bunch of things that you had no idea are smart. Exactly. So basically, like we were saying, people that can hack into things in your house, you know, like your like your car. Um, IoT is your is your internet TV. It's it's the if you have a really nice uh, refrigerator that has the online devices that shows you what you want to order, what's in your fridge. Basically, it's any any little device that doesn't have like a Windows or an Apple operating system that cannot talks to internet, but doesn't have an application that you can actually access. If that makes sense. So that was one way of exploiting people's um, security. So you I know? literally installed a faucet yesterday for a friend that you go, Alexa, one cup of water at 91 Fahrenheit. Really? And it pours you one cup of water at 91 Fahrenheit. How long does it take the water to heat up for that? Does that some kind of heat? It, it runs for, it's actually designed to go with the thing that heats the water instantly, but he only has the water pressure. So it runs for a little bit, then it stops. Then you put the cup underneath, and then you put your hand over it, and then it runs at 91. That's nuts. <laughs> so yeah, that's your faucet. So did that go on top of the faucet somewhere? Was it the whole faucet? It's the whole faucet, but like you, there's a little infrared thing on the top that you wave your hand over the signal that I have the cup underneath. Right. See. But, 10 years ago, I thought it was really cool. I installed a faucet that, that hot water was red and cold water was blue. That's a lot cooler than I was back then. <laughs> well, people don't realize all this stuff takes bandwidth on your Wi-Fi. Yes, and, and those things are constantly running. Uh, yeah, and the more things you add, and then they start talking to each other, and then, God forbid, they start updating. <laughs> each other. Yeah, th things on your network can get really chatty, and that's one thing that's hard, even on your phone. Um, I had friends that would get new phones and they would say, hey, my phone is not working. It's super slow. I said, well, let's just see what's running right now. And literally every device he has was able to access the internet at the same time. So I'm like, you turn your phone on and all of these applications all start up. And your, your, your computer's like that too. You can go to your, uh, in, in Windows, you can go to startup and see what starts on startup. And a lot of programs you have, like you have an HP printer, wants its, its, its ink monitor, it wants its, uh, its print queue open, it has three different programs it wants to start just for a printer to be connected to your computer. So you can imagine everything else that wants to start a startup, Adobe wants to have its updater on, turned on, um, Microsoft wants to make sure that you're online, Adobe wants to make sure that you have a legit copy. So before you even touch a key, 13 applications start up. And so you want to your PC is slow, your brand new PC, well, things are registered in your startup to start up immediately. And so you, may, you basically want to check out your startup on all your programs and your phone to find out where your bandwidth is. Your network's the exact same way between your washer and your Alexas and your iPhones and your little tied instant orderers that are by your washing machine. Everything is chatting and just basically talking to each other. So try to limit what's, what's, what's being talked to or when it talks to certain things. Let's see what else we got going on. We learned a little bit about crack attacks. Did anyone hear what the, did anyone uh, do research on what crack meant and what crack attack was? 
so in in chapter three it talks about crack attack and how how some really smart people broke wpa2 authentication so the way your device is like like a ps2 or anything connects to your network like a laptop it uses a security form called uh, a wpa2 and what it does is basically it sends four packets out and it receives it to your machine saying hey i'm this hey i'm this hey i'm this it sends four signals out and what this device what this really cool person did was he basically hijacked the third message so your pc talks to the router says hey i'm this and the router says okay hi it says hey i'm this okay hi and then on the third message it stops it and it basically comes jumps in the middle grabs all the information that was that was traveled that was transmitted like your pass key your username your password and kind of hides it here and since the pc never re receives the third message again it kind of says oh there must be something wrong i'll send it back out again so the machine and the network get caught in this loop trying to say hi i'm here hi where are you hi i'm here hi where are you and in the meantime this guy's in the background acting as if you know making an echo board and just running your computer your pc for ransomware and everything else now obviously to be to do this they have to be within the proximity of your home but literally if you have a good enough router they could park in the middle of a court and access all five homes so it's a, it's pretty scary but it's super smart again i was talking about the harry potter uh voldemort reference like yeah it's a very bad thing but man that's really smart so a lot of hackers really like appreciate the big things that people do, whether they're good or bad, you kind of just are in awe of how, you know, how they decipher that. <laughs> oh, I got Marvin trying to come in here. Sorry, buddy. Hey, Marvin, sorry about that. I see you in the green room, taking a smoke break, I brought you in. <laughs> hey, Marvin. <laughs> All how right. <laughs> Travis, are those attacks? I know the, the book gave a good uh, website for a lot of information on that. But yes. how pervasive is it? So what I'm going to share with you guys now, and I just want you to all watch this. It's a 10 minute video and I want you to really all um, remember this, this, this YouTube, um, this YouTube account, these people, they make amazing videos. And that's all about, they have buffer overflow attacks and these guys, they go and do great detail on everything about cybersecurity and all these different attacks. And this, these guys are really cool. They're called, um, what are they called? They're called, uh, computer file. They're, they're really cool. So I want you guys to take, I will play it on my machine for you all, but I won't bump the lag. If you guys can all take about 10 minutes and watch this video for me and just learn about crack is really cool. Okay. Let me know if you guys can all see that link in the chat. Can everybody see the link? Did you get it, Lori? Oh, you're still, I think Lori said so you still can't you still can't see the youtube video lori okay
Hey, Christine. Christine, are you there? Did class just start? I was trying to join earlier, but I was having issues getting in. No problem. I usually have a green room where I kind of select people to come in at a certain time. So you're okay. I started about 10 minutes ago. I sent everybody a link uh, in the chat. Can you see it? Let me know if you can see that. That's a YouTube link that's in the chat from me. No, I don't see it. Okay, I'm gonna send this just to you. Hold on one second, okay? Sure. Open that link up and watch it for the next five minutes and then we're gonna all regroup, okay?
You guys should be almost done. It's pretty crazy, right? Yeah, it's all done. Pretty close. I think last minute or so is not not too much going on. Just have you regroup. Pretty interesting, right? Those guys on 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 that channel are really slick. They deal with a lot of terminology we've dealt with here. They're they're really smart. Those guys are are network security gu gurus, and they literally just break down exactly how these attacks work. Um, the buffer overflow one was a really good video that I watched just recently too. I didn't explain it as, as in depth as those guys did. They did a pretty good job. So do you guys all have your, uh, your, your, um, your network Academy lab open right now, or sorry, your, um, your chapter three open. Why don't you guys, if you can open up to your, uh, your net Academy, uh, Cisco, uh, chapter three that we just did this week. And I want to do a lab with you guys together if we can. It's the one on 3.2.2.3, and it says, uh, discover your own risky be uh, online behavior. Can there, is everybody there? Are you there, Sue? What was the number again? 3.2.2.3. If you're looking at your actual electric cybersecurity, it should be the one that says, um, is it who owns your data? Let me see which one this one is, 3.2.2.3. It should be the one that says, discover your own risky online behavior. Can you all see that? Yeah? Why don't you guys kind of take this little this little exam? It's like one of those uh, dating quizzes in some of the old the the magazines. Like, is he right for you? <laughs> so if you look at these numbers, give yourself some good numbers on here, and be very truthful with these, as will help you really assess who you are online and what you need to change online. Is that funny, Angel? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Are you kidding me? I have a 19 year old daughter. Of course, I know what you're talking about. And the answer is always no. He's oh, yeah. never, he's never good for you. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. So go through and let me see your numbers and let's, uh, let's talk about this. Give me a couple minutes to, to fill these out. I'm pretty bad. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I am very unsafe and I will be compromised if <laughs> I came out to be. It was a really good uh, Netflix documentary that came out about social networks, about Facebook. Did you guys ever watch that? Just came out this year. It's really, really good. The Social Dilemma? Yes. Yes, I watched it. It really talks about how sites uh, you go to, uh, your, intellect, your intellect is their product. And basically, they make money on guessing what you're going to do and trying to trying to walk you into certain algorithms to make sure that you do certain steps. And then based on those certain steps, they know how to market to you and they can sell to other basically like any, uh, um, any product like Tide or macaroni and cheese. And they'll know what times a day you're looking at objects and what times a day you're looking at things to go to the store and how many kids you have. And so they literally just can market to products with a very in-your-face marketing because 
obviously we know billboards work, but a billboard on your phone that you look at 14 hours a day and knowing the times you'll be on those, on those devices is everything. It's everything in marketing. And they can see if you looked at it, they can see how many times you looked at it and they can tell if you clicked on it. And so basically, instead of people going out and buying billboards, they're literally buying the space on your phone for less of a price and at, and at pennies per, per person. So they'll know exactly when they got you and exactly when you read it and exactly they'll know if you bought something or not. It's pretty, it's pretty crazy. And All you have to ask yourself is why is this free and why does the 24 year old that run it own a multi-million dollar luxury yacht? Yeah, right. Or one or one or one or many. Well, when I first met Mr. Zuckerberg, he was 26 years old and he had a $90 million yacht in the mid. Jesus. Oh. Yeah. Now I'm sure he's got a couple. <laughs> they, they couldn't even print enough money for these people like, like Bill Gates and these guys or you know, from Evan Bezos. If they wanted a dollars for all their money, they would, no bank could ever print out that much money for them. So it's, it's pretty crazy. Well, it's pretty crazy how their stocks go up and down as well. So did anybody get zero to three on this quiz, honestly? Can I ask a question about the quiz? Huh? I have a clarifying question. Sure. Um, which is, uh, where is it? It says, um, when you receive an email with links to other sites, um, it says you do not click the link or you click the links or you click the links. What if you, what generally I will do is I will type the link, like I will actually type it into the URL, but that's not an option. What's the closest to that? Is that like clicking the links because, or hovering over to verify the destination yeah, URL? The brings what I do. I, that, the, I do is I hover, it's the same thing as happened the first couple of characters. Okay, so then that. That's what I wanted to know, because then you know, the I can. W.microsaft.com or. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Oh, it's going to gaggle. Okay. <laughs> so those, okay. those, yeah, those broken letters in the links, they're, they're not by mistake. You okay. might think, oh, my friend just typed it in wrong. It's going to the right place. No, <laughs> you're going somewhere very bad and they're going to do stuff to you. One, two. What was your score, Christine? Sorry, I'm still adding it up. <laughs> is, is it more than three? <laughs> oh my God. It was um, six, seven, eight, yeah. Oh, nine, seven. Yeah, it was eight. Eight? That's not bad. That, that really isn't bad. I think under, under 10 is not horrible. I think this, I think this quiz is, is pretty rough. What about you, Marvin? What'd you get? Hmm. We can't hear you, Marvin. I think you're muted still. Please use your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Juliana? What was your score? I got 13. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're pretty bad. I mean, you're not the yeah. worst. It's mostly. Because I connect to um, um, Wi-Fi when I'm out, and I just log on to my financial institution. Like, I don't check it. When I go to Wells Fargo, I just go at it. So, sure. yeah. You know, one thing I do to, with, especially like if I go to a coffee shop or whatever, I just use my phone as a hotspot. Do you guys all do that? No. But, you know, you know, do you know how to do that? Well, so I, have a, I have a VPN. Okay. That's not bad. If you have a VPN, you're legit. That's that's totally fine. It's still better than getting on just their Wi-Fi and 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 going on. Um, so what you do is, if you guys don't use a use a um, your own hotspot on your phone, using a VPN is the only other safe way to do it. That's all there is. And you think you you go on Starbucks website, you know, they have little terms of service for, while you're there, but they can be they're not saying they're gonna access your data. But they could be using, you know, your, your IP for most of content. They could be using it to push ads to you for later. They could use it for their own marketing as well. 
an associate your name, but I mean, who knows? I mean, who really knows what, what they can collect? If they can collect, collect the MAC address of your phone when you go online, then they can they can find you later. So, scary. I just, you know, just be careful. When you log on to a public Wi-Fi, well, basically, if you log on to anybody's Wi-Fi, you're, you're basically giving them permission to use your information for whatever purposes that they need it for. Yeah. It's, that's, it's a rule that you sign up when you, um, it's like one of those things on your Apple iPhone that you yeah. agree to. In terms of service. Yeah. So whenever you log on to, like, say you go to a winery, you log on to their Wi-Fi, they now have all your social media information. What, in, what media do you use the most? Do you Instagram? And if you're Instagramming, they see where you're posting and tagging and all that stuff. And so the, the terms of service that come up, they're really, I'm not going to say that they're, that they're a false, a false narrative. You know, they're trying to make you feel comfortable about being on their Wi-Fi. But, you know, you, you, you give up a lot of access. You know, you give a lot of access. Sorry, you give up a lot, a lot of privacy. You give up a lot of access to your device and to what you're using. And again, like they can see what apps you're running. They can see what you're using. You can see what you're on at, at that time. So yeah, it's, it's it's a big deal, you know. Obviously, I just I just don't use Wi-Fi when I go out places. I just use my phone. But again, other but getting a VPN is the only other way to be secure when you go out. And I will ask, what VPN services do you recommend? Um, I was reading up on Nord a while ago, but recently apparent something popped up that they're not as safe as what they market themselves to be. What do you use, Angel? Um, I use Express VPN. Can, can you hear me? I don't even know if I'm muted. No, I'm not. Okay. I use Express VPN, but I started using it because at the school site that I worked at, they kept blocking a lot of the transmissions. And so I installed it and then just installed it on everything. And I use it all the time. Is it like 50 bucks a year or how is that? Yeah, I think it's. It's on auto renewal. So I, I want to say it's like $70 a year, something like that. But to me, I mean, I do my banking online. And mm -hmm. so I use it, my VPN's on at home, on my phone, on my computers, everywhere I go. I just don't turn it off. Mm -hmm. um, because you could say the same thing of somebody who's like w driving down your street. If they can access your Wi-Fi, your stuff isn't safe. And so since I'm doing my banking and financial stuff on there and I've had my identity stolen and it sucks. Right. So. I'm, I'm going to offer you guys this week from also about just being secure with your passwords and your own networks. One thing I've, I've done for a very long time is not broadcast my SSID. Mm -hmm. So basically if someone drives up to my neighborhood, obviously they have a packet sniffer where they can see everything, but for the normal person, they can't walk up and see your Wi-Fi. If you don't have your SSID, it means it doesn't it doesn't broadcast the name of your of your network. Um, so if you're on a device like your phone, you want to connect to it anyways. You can just type in what the network is without seeing it pop up. You know, you can type in one yourself. So that's something I use myself personally at home. I think it's pretty pretty safe for I me, mean, obviously being at home. But um, that's one more step. A good password, a good 10, 10 character password using lots of different characters uh, will be helpful. But at home. I will change your SSID to, to, to be blocked. And that's one more way people not seeing your network. Do you have a recommended VPN? Do you bother using one of those? Like I said, when, when I go out, I use my phone. And if I, so I just, I just use my, 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 my cell phone if they're really worried As a about hotspot? It. I, yeah, I never get on people's Wi-Fi. Just, I just don't do it. There's no reason for it. I just buy the big, the big package with my phone, unlimited data. So maybe that's like my, my trade off of my 70 a year. <laughs> you know, I just I just find it more secure. My phone's really. I remember when when we had the um, the fires here. We had when our and our power was out. You know, I was able to connect with my fire stick using um using a uh, using a, a generator to my TV on using my own phone as my hotspot. So I mean, even though people were out, I still had internet and could could still use my, my, my phone device for my TV, which was pretty slick. That's what I like. So at this time, guys, um, we have the last 20 minutes to work on uh, week four. So please dive into chapter four or Angeline, you can jump into chapter three. <laughs> and uh, any questions, I'll be here to talk with talk you guys through them or any kind of questions you guys have about this chapter or chapter four. I'll be right here for you guys and please uh, dig in.
Ten góry. I will put in the chat, you guys, the link to the YouTube for Napa Learns, so you can see all of our videos, and you can see all the videos of the other classes as well. Right there in the chat. Oh, sorry, just went to just Christine. <laughs> Give this to everybody as well. There you go. Hey, John. 
just want to ask you a question. So you said you met Mark before? Zuckerberg? Yeah, great. well, I was part of the help. So right. he, it's not like him and I had great conversation. Let me ask you a question. I, I, I brought up before, you know, the, the old Batman theory, you know, you either die a hero or live long enough to be the villain. You know, at, at this point, is there anything he can do to ever not be a villain in other people's eyes? I mean, at this point, should he just walk away and let people take over the company? Or do you think that you can ever, with having this much power over this much of communications, ever be looked at as not a villain in this enterprise? I think the thing is, is that he owns pretty much the code that makes Facebook work. And to give that away, I mean, look how much money he makes a year just by holding on to it. If you give that away, um, you, you're just going to be losing trillions and trillions of dollars. And then you become, you fade and you become the guy that ran, um, uh, what's the, the other thing? MySpace? Wait, Tom. Tom. You, become, you become Tom. Where's Wait. Tom? No one knows Tom. So Wait. it's not, I, I think people invested in Facebook because they saw the information that Facebook and MySpace were getting and realized it was valuable. And these are the guys that came in like angel investors with real money. Right. And they pretty much set up the contracts that they really call the shots. And at the end of the day, if Mark Zuckerberg wants to hold onto the code and keep making those trillions, he's got to do what they tell him to do. And he's got to go to court for all the stuff that they tell him to do. Right. So, so you, see him in, you see him in court in front of Congress you know, I'm not going to say he's lying, but he's basically giving half answers. You know, this stuff isn't secure. He's, there's no way he can secure it the way he says he's going to try to. And at some point, he'll, he, he might be the fall guy for all of this that goes down. I mean, at some point, I'd be afraid of going to, you know, basically going to prison for, for what my code's not doing or for what my investors are doing in the background. At some point, I would just want to just say, you know what, I'll take my money. You can deal with the prison sentences. I'll be on one of my yachts, <laughs> if you need me. Uh, well, first of all, Mark Zuckerberg can't really just escape the world. He's just too much of a high-profile character, and I think yeah. he's used to that. But um, as to him going to jail, like, before, the second something bad happens, I'm sure he's got a team of people, or the people that pay, that pay him his wages or whatever, they've yeah. got a team of people that start rewriting laws that change in about change current laws in about a year's time so by the time he goes to court a lot of change right yeah uh, Very. <laughs> these guys i mean i used to work on super yachts in the mid um and I, like, I've, I've met some very interesting people that just shouldn't be outside of bars but there's no way that they'll ever be arrested or detained or anything for that matter you don't know who they are but they have presidents and generals sitting at their table and they shoot the shit with them. And uh, it's just, unfortunately, that level of money talks. Very, very, very loudly. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? If you're sitting there and they go, hey, can you just bend a rule or lose a piece of evidence, you know, uh, you will accidentally find some cryptocurrency in the equivalent of about a million dollars. You're going to think about it. Yeah. You know, it's not traceable. It's a lot of money. Uh, yeah. It's a lot of money for me, but for him, it's like, it's what he gets from interest every couple of seconds. Yeah. I don't know. It, it's a sad world, man. Oh, that's just when it was first thinking about on the stand and like asking these questions about, about the breaches and what he could have done or in how they harvest and what they don't do. And it just seems, you know, he seems like he's sweating a lot. <laughs> it doesn't seem like those, those answers come pretty easily to him. I've heard from reputable sources that there's internal jokes about information that they get from random users. They need to do like product testing and whatnot, and they will find some random stuff and it's shared amongst each other for jokes. I cannot confirm that, sure. but having an understanding of cloud marketing and stuff, I, like I got friends that own companies that specialize in like 
cloud market, like social media marketing and things like that. Yeah. I've, I studied cloud marketing 10 years ago when it was like a huge uh, thing and a magical thing. Yeah. Um, I, you know, you're trying to tell me the guy that makes like your Apple phone cannot find a way how to get you information. Right. You know, you're using their platform, their security codes. You think they're going to really lock themselves out? So you could do whatever you want to do? Yeah, Apple's been pretty, um, they've been pretty, I don't know, so far they've been pretty um, uh, steadfast and not helping the authorities open people's phones and things like that. I don't know if that's changed, but I remember they were trying to break people's phones for like uh, for, for court cases and they're like, we're not going to do any of that for you. We're not here to hack our, hack our coaches just for any law enforcement purposes. Most that there was a big battle for that. I'm sure the NSA has ways around it, but the bottom line is is that the NSA and all those people can get into an iPhone. Yes, they they can. The only thing is it cannot be admissible in court. Right. Now, something like Apple love this type of stuff because then they show the world like, oh no, we protect your stuff. Right. Fight as hard as you want. We're gonna put all of our lawyers because everyone's gonna go, Well, Apple protect my stuff. I'm gonna buy their product now. Yes. It's, it's weird how the wheels turn, man. Sure. Sorry, I'm very cynical and jaded with all this type of stuff, but if I haven't made that obvious. Like I said, anyone, anyone in IT, as long as, oh, I have, or anyone else, you're very, I'm very jaded as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, now my mentor from a couple of years ago, I think he's like, at least you've taken a step back and you realize that there's no getting around this. You got to kind of like, at some stage, you just got to put your blinkers on and just walk through it and hope for the best. You know, but like my mentor from a couple of years ago, he still, he, to this day, like he scoffs at people that use social network. Uh, he gets, he, he gets LinkedIn requests and he feels like these guys are doing personal tax to him. Ouch. You know, it's like he he lives in his own little world where he's made his own fortress and he believes like the whole world should think like that, like cut him off. And to a degree, yes, but it's not how the world works. Too many people need this to operate. And I mean, my significant other, she's a wine club manager. Her life is a hundred <laughs> times easier because she can just send an email to the demographic that she needs. Yeah. Yeah, I worked in IT for Duckhorn. Those guys are pretty on top of their stuff there. Duckhorn's an amazing winery, and they're so high-tech. It's so cool there. Um, I took a winery job. Not You know, it's hard being in wine because they don't invest a lot of my technology, but Duckhorn does. And, like, they're, they're members of social media presence. They do a, a fantastic job. And I know those those club managers, and it's all about those numbers and those hits. So, yeah, they're, they're really good at what they do. I used to play rugby with the old wine winemaker, Bill. Bill Nakara. I met the one. I met the winemaker at. I used to work at um, Paradox, which which is which isn't the Duck Horn Winery. It's Paradox on the Road, and I yeah. worked in Migration. They have five other wineries within Santa Rosa, and then obviously the one. Decoy, yes. Paradox. Yes. Uh, there's a couple, yeah. Yeah. Now Bill, I think Bill left five years ago. Okay, I was just yeah. there last year. Yeah. No, they, they, yeah, I've got nothing bad to say about that one. I like this stuff. Yeah, their facilities so, so are great. Their wine's amazing. And uh, one thing that's what's, what's really said about the wine industry, about big guys like that is, you know, they're they're buying more and more grapes from all the pop wineries. And so a lot of small vineyards are having a harder time finding grapes to make their wine because places like Duckhorn has their, you know, they have their their recipes down to a T. They can pretty much use any grapes that they that they want to make their wine. And so a lot of smaller vineyards that, that try to outsource their grapes are having harder and harder times from the big guys. Well, they have, I mean, uh, without giving away the secret sources and stuff like that, they basically have rapport with certain wineries that if they feel, if they want their Pinot Noir, for example, they make one phone call and they get it. Yeah. You know, they get priority over most of what it is they want. Not, not, across the board, but they get priority where it matters. Mm -hmm. And that is just from years and years of good relationship building. Mm -hmm. so, networking in this valley is beyond paramount. Yeah, for sure.
I remember even when we did, uh, I worked for NVL and we would do all the, all, obviously all, all the wine, all the, all the bottle picking for their, uh, to, for, um, for people's orders. So if you order like Mondavi online, we sent the wine to you, not Mondavi. So we basically were just, we're just the Amazon for their, for their wine for many, many, many wineries. But uh, when somebody came to our winery, to our place to, to bring their wine to us, two people came. It wasn't just one company. And then when one company left, three others left or four others would leave. So it was basically a, a ebb and flow of, you know, of, of customers. And that's from networking because they all trust each other. This is their babies. And when one person would leave, their friends would go and they would go to the, they'd go to the competition. So networking is paramount in this, in this valley. Yeah. I found out that there's a, a club for lack of a better term. It's called the men who do lunch. <laughs> okay. And these gentlemen, uh, and that's what they do. They go and they do lunch. And for the most part, that's all it is. But if somebody says, I need a guy that can change all the LED, all my lights into LEDs into my house, who do you recommend? And if someone says, I use this person, then everybody uses that person Crazy. exclusively. Is this, is this a specific group of like five guys that control the valley? Uh, it's... It's, there's a, there's a couple of them. I like, you know, I, I don't feel like getting myself in trouble <laughs> <laughs> because I want my name in the men who do lunch, yep. please. Thank you. That's That's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, th it's kind of how this valley operates. Like the longer I stay here, the, the more I laugh. It's, it's a very old school way of operating. A lot of money out here um yeah you know big old money mm -hmm. a lot of good a lot of good grapes too yeah it's just the wineries don't really use all the grapes yet. it's too expensive mm -hmm. they just use enough to get the napa lo label yep you want to mark that napa napa vineyard on there you just that's all you need you just need just enough to do that mm. and then in the you know, here we come Oh, Lori, good job. Do they do lunch in Rutherford? I don't know, John. Maybe, maybe you can. Do they do lunch in Rutherford, uh, Sue? Sorry, what about Rutherford? I didn't because... know if that was where they had lunch because I know of a group of men that meet oh. at where I work. <laughs> Uh, well, I don't know. From what I heard, they do lunch wherever it is they feel like doing lunch. <laughs> Another group of men. There's a few of them, probably. Well, I'm sure. Everybody wants to be part of their own little secret society. It's fashionable. <laughs> right? <laughs> God, I think the first one I heard of when I first arrived here was called Psychedelic Rooster. <laughs> And it was a bunch of winemakers that got together once a month or something, once every two months or something, and then they would do they would drop acid and make wine together, and then they made a label called Psychedelic Rooster. It's got to be part of the old Bialy guys, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, I know the the main guy was the old owner of Tea Vine. Okay. But then yeah, but then his wife passed away, and then he like left the group and things like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy uh, as I said dude this valley, this valley cracks me up sometimes good interesting people I like the fact that it's so transient there's people from all over the globe I mean myself yeah. included 
Uh, but I, I never feel like I'm a foreigner, if that makes sense. If you ever go to the Meritage, you'll feel even more that way. It feels like it's like a hub of like every country to come to a Napa. The Meritage is pretty crazy. Yeah, well, I go to the Meritage. Uh, everyone does their Christmas parties there for the bowling thing. Yeah, they do. They're actually yeah. hiring, an, hiring an IT guy right now, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just remember, guys, all I want you to do for tonight's homework is just, or this week's homework, please just go chapter four. I want you to make sure you take the chapter four quiz before Monday or probably before Tuesday. And just get in your mind some questions you want to ask our speaker who will be here probably, uh, probably in two weeks. And just basically ask, you know, what do you want to know from someone in the industry? Maybe, you know, a question you might have for someone how hard it was to get in the industry or what question you might have on taking more classes, especially because he does, he runs a course in Santa Rosa can point you in the direction of uh, maybe another path you might lead to to get to be a cybersecurity technician. All right. Any questions you guys have for me? Again, I, I hold regular office hours. Um, email me whenever. I'll always reply back to you guys. And you guys have the link in the chat for our channel. So please take that out to check out the videos and see your smiling, beautiful faces talking online. Thanks, Travis. All right, guys, Thank you. Have you. Have fun with your daughter. Thank you. Yeah, it's bad time right now. She's eagerly waiting with a bag of toys. <laughs> I'm going to sign off and keep working. Thanks, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye. Bye John. Thanks for all your talking. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.